James. What do you make, uh, Colonel, of the reports that have come out in the last few hours that Ali Khamenei, the leader of Iran, is said to be gravely ill, uh, terminally ill? Um, he may only have months to live. Um, does this raise any prospect of regime change, particularly if there's a leadership vacuum after a change of government uh, in the United States, assuming a Republican victory? Um, what do you make of that? And you know, I mean, surely the Iranian people must be sick of seeing their money being poured into tunnels in Lebanon and into weapons and so on, rather than into bettering their own lives. Well, knowing about um, Israel's ingenuity at dealing with people who attack their country, I think the conspiracy theorists could be forgiven for thinking maybe khomeini has been slipped some kind of drug by Mossad. <laughs> um, but, but, yes, I think... I think things are conspiring now against Iran. Iran is certainly on the back foot. They've had their two main proxies, Hamas and Hezbollah, very, very badly damaged on the verge of defeat in the case of Hamas and seriously damaged in the case of Hezbollah. They've had their, their, their inability to defend their country against Israel, again demonstrated this morning in Israel time by the uh, 100 aircraft that were, were used to carry out an attack a thousand miles from Israel's territory. They were unable to do anything about it. All of them returned completely intact. So that does bring into question the, the benefit to Iran of the huge amounts of money that the Ayatollahs have spent on, not only on their own defense, but also on their proxies. And I think that the weakening of the regime that we saw uh, this morning Will, will not be missed by the dissidents in Iran. There's a huge opposition to Khomeini and his regime in Iran, and, and this can only encourage that. So I think we can hope that at some point, maybe in the not-too-distant future, possibly con coinciding with Khomeini's demise, I don't know, we could hope to see a, a different regime in Iran at some point, maybe in the next few months. Now, Richard, I'm going to ask you to do something very unpleasant, and that's to delve into the murky mind and thinkings of Joe Biden and Kamala Harris <laughs> and uh, try and why you've mentioned we all want to see the Iranian people free. We all want to see the end of the terror regime of the Ayatollahs. Um, that brings peace to the Middle East and peace to the world, potentially. Why on earth are the Obama-Biden-Harris team so determined to prop up Iran? I don't get it. Because they... <coughs> Obama essentially conceived a hugely misguided strategy of trying to rebalance the power in the Middle East by giving more power, more influence to Iran. Uh, and, and he's done that. And Obama started it off, and uh, uh, Biden's continued it, no doubt under Obama's guidance mm -hmm. since he took office. And they, you know, they've they've been desperate to return to this nuclear deal, which basically allows Iran to create nuclear weapons. Although they would deny that's the case, but that's what the deal does in effect. They've released billions of dollars of frozen assets to Iran mm. to fund the nuclear program and also to um, to fund regional aggression. So th this is their thinking. It, it's it's totally illogical thinking to any rational person. But that's what they that's what they said. That's the path that Obama set them on, and that's the path that Joe Biden and Kamala Harris have continued down. And I've no doubt if Kamala is elected president in November, she will continue on that route. James. And Colonel, I mean, we've spoken about uh, Israel's infiltration of Iran and Hezbollah, but what about Iranian infiltration of the West? How concerned are you about reports that there are uh, officials in the Biden administration who may be potentially compromised? We even saw somebody lose their security clearance under murky circumstances that um, Iran may have uh, voices and eyes and ears within uh, the higher echelons of the American defense and intelligence um, community. I think that's very likely to be the case. And, you know, we've seen recently a reported leak of mm. Israel's attack plans about a few days ago yeah. uh, on Iran, which was allegedly leaked by somebody who's pretty senior in the administration who is Iranian themselves. So mm. we, we, there's certainly grounds, I think, for grave suspicion there. And, of course, if it applies to the United States, that would be the number one target for infiltration. Then we can also assume it would apply to our governments as well here in the UK, maybe even yours in Australia, depending on how much emphasis they place on wanting to penetrate our governments. 
Richard Kemp, always great to talk to you. Uh, as I say, it's fascinating what is happening and clearly the election of Donald Trump would be a major boon to uh, peace in the Middle East and peace throughout the world. Colonel Richard Kemp, always great to chat to you. Thanks so much for coming on. Outsiders at that late night there in London. <laughs>